Good evening. Ion, there we are. Good evening and welcome. We're so delighted that you're here this Good Friday evening for Tenebrae. A series of reflections and songs that help us to meditate upon <laughs> Jesus's final hours with us. At the end of the Tenebrae service, it ends with the last song into silence as we go into the night reflecting upon what we have heard. So after that last song, you're just welcome to make your way uh, with the reflection uh, back home. But let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift, the great gift of our Savior, Jesus, and all that he does for us, laying his life down on the cross. We receive with great humility the salvation you offer to us. Open our minds and our hearts to be touched by your love tonight as we reflect in song and word and the greatness of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Seven last days. The final week of Jesus' earthly existence. Was there ever a more monumental time in all of human history? In some ways, these seven last days mirror the seven first days of creation. In both cases, a new world was being born. And yet, at the time, no one was aware of their importance. The Gospel of Mark paints a vivid picture of the events on that final week in Jesus' life, of those fateful seven last days. The first day of the week dawned with a sunshine of hope and exhilaration. On the day that came to be known as Palm Sunday, Jesus basked in the adoration of the throngs as he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, 
Go to the village ahead of you, and you will find a colt there. Untie it and bring it here. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. They cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. had begun on a bright note, dark clouds soon rolled in, clouds that Jesus himself had summoned. On Monday, the world saw a sight of Jesus they had seldom, if ever, witnessed. It was an angry, violent Jesus who squandered the goodwill of the city that had welcomed him not 24 hours earlier. His rage had been triggered by what he saw at the temple. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of money changers and the benches of those selling doves. He said, is it not written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers.
Tuesday dawned as a day of controversy. An ominous spirit was moving among the people. As Jesus taught in the temple, he was confronted by priests, <coughs> teachers, and elders who questioned his authority. Throughout the day, they squabbled, argued, and debated. They attempted to trap Jesus by posing thorny questions about paying taxes to Caesar and quizzed him about the greatest commandment. As the day drew to a close, an exhausted Jesus sat down to rest. It was then the only bright spot of the day came his way. Jesus sat down in the temple and watched the crowd putting money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Wednesday will forever be stained by treachery, for it was on this fourth day of the week that Judas agreed to betray Jesus. Judas, one of Jesus' closest and most trusted disciples, of all the wounds that Jesus suffered during his passion, this cut was among the deepest. No doubt his mind recalled the words of the heartbroken psalmist who wrote, even my close friend, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. <coughs> then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. 
So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Thursday was the day of preparation for the Passover. For most people, this day was spent in joyous celebration, anticipating the great feast and remembering God's salvation and deliverance. But a shadow fell over the table where Jesus and his friends gathered in an upper room. And an even darker shadow awaited him in a garden on the outskirts of the holy city. By day's end, the table would become a place for all to remember another kind of salvation and deliverance. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Do this in remembrance of me.
on Friday, Jesus was led before a council of chief priests, elders, and teachers who accused him and found him guilty and deserving of death. They delivered him to Pilate so that he might carry out their wishes. But Pilate, recognizing the duplicity of the accusers, was reluctant to do so. However, he misjudged their influence over the crowd and soon cries of, crucify him, were rising up all around. Giving in to the mounting anger of the people, Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers clothed him in a purple robe and twisted together a crown of thorns for his head. They mocked him, calling out, hail, king of the Jews. They spit on him slapped him in the face, and struck him again and again on the head with a staff. Carrying his own cross, he was led out to the place of the skull where they crucified him. Two criminals were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. At the sixth hour, darkness descended over the whole land then, at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. <coughs> forsaken me. My God, why have you forsaken me? You have turned your back on your only son. Now it's finished, my work is done. Oh, 
Saturday began at sundown, just three hours after Jesus died. His limp body still hung there on the cross. But then, in the midst of darkness, a ray of light appeared. A member of the council that had condemned Jesus, a man named Joseph who had not consented to the sentence, came forward. Something had happened to Joseph as he stood in the presence of Jesus and he was transformed from an accuser to a disciple. Determined to perform one final act of kindness, Joseph asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a large stone against the entrance went away. <laughs> 